Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're watching in your part of the world. Welcome. It's time once again for the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song broadcast for this 15th day of September. And today's topic is titled, Even Me. Amen. And I believe there's a song uh, with that uh, in it. And I can't remember the name of the hymn, but um, uh, good hymn. I um, just wish I could remember the name of it offhand, but I uh, can't remember it at this point. But uh, anyway, um, so we'll find out uh, about that topic here in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And hope and pray that he's your Lord and Savior today. Amen. Because he's the only one that can give you eternal life. And um, one day if you trust him as your Savior, he'll either catch us away in the rapture. Or if you uh, pass on uh, first, you'll go be with him that way. Amen. So praise the Lord. And uh, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And believe on his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to save their souls. Amen. So, praise God for that. Amen. Alright, so we're going to sing 1 John 3, 2 uh, before we get started on the topic. So we're going to press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. 1 John 3, 2. two. Beloved, now we are the sons, sons of God, God and, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know, know that when he shall, shall appear, we shall, we shall be, be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Sure will. Love it. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be, shall be like him. We shall see him, we shall see him, we shall see him as he is. We shall see him, we shall see him, we shall see him, see him. See him. See him. as he is. The sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be, shall be like him. We shall see him, we shall see him. We shall see him as he is. We shall see him. We shall see him. We shall see him as he is. Amen. <laughs> so, I really like that part where he's like, but we know that, <laughs> Amen. It's good, uh, how he how he does that during the song, um, Amen. So good scripture song, and yes, we shall see him as he is one day. If you're not, if you're saved, you are a son of God, Amen, and a child of the Lord, Amen. If not, well, you're not, and you're the son of the devil, and so you want to get out of that position, and you don't want to perish in your sin, that's for sure. So trust Jesus today, Amen. All right, so we'll do that again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic titled Even Me for this 15th day of September. And the passage is from Matthew 9, 37b and then verse 38. It says, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Matthew 9, 37b and 38. And yes, the harvest truly is plenteous, but there's not enough laborers, and we need to get out there and go tell people about Jesus. That's what we're uh, commanded to do. As it says in uh, Mark 16, it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
Amen. So let's get out there and do that today. All right. So today's author is R.P. And that would be, I believe that's the initials for Randy Pike. So let me see. R.P. If I remember correctly. Yep, that's Randy uh, Pike, and he's a missionary statesman uh, from Greenville, South Carolina. So let me read you what he wrote today on this topic of even me. All right. <clears throat> he says here, I'll read you what he wrote here. He says, the pastor preached the most stirring sermon I had ever heard in my life. He said, I can almost hear him ask, has God called you to his harvest field? And never forget, God has a plan and purpose for your life, regardless of who you are. And we all know that once we're saved, that God has called us into the harvest field, the mission field. So once you're saved, then you're to go out and tell others about Jesus. So he's called all of us. Amen. And you don't um, get a special calling. We get uh, special different gifts. And amen. But we're all called to go out and preach the gospel and tell everybody about Jesus. Amen. All right, so, again, uh, continuing on, he says, At the conclusion of the meeting, I somehow managed to stumble uh, to the front, uh, literally dropping into a large pulpit chair. I told the concerned minister, Oh, help me, find my way back to God. Amen. Um, he did just that. Praise the Lord. Little did I know, but a whole new world and life were about to draw upon this little crippled uh, radio announcer, he says. Amen. All right. Uh, continuing on, he says, Now I had something wonderful to announce. It was the good news of the saving gospel of Christ, a message of hope, love, forgiveness, and eternal life for all who would repent and believe. Oddly enough, like Jacob's son Asher, I have lived and served God within the same divine sentence. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. Deuteronomy thirty-three twenty-five. My withered, impotent feet bear shoes of iron and brass, and have done so for for over six decades. Uh, defying all sensible logic and reasoning, our hope in Christ is so profound that it is beyond human conclusions. For me, it is a a uh, curious but delightful paradox when the scriptures declare, see Romans 10.15. So let's go there, Romans 10.15. Read that scripture. Romans 10 and verse 15. All right, Romans 10.15. It says, And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So, uh, continuing, it says, uh, again, um, I'll read this to you. He says, for me, it is a curious but delightful paradox when the scriptures declare, and uh, what a marvel that uh, even... Uh, Par uh, paraplegic feet are counted beautiful if they are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Ephesians 6.15 What is your excuse? Ho, ho, ho. What is your excuse for not going? What is my excuse for not going? Ouch. <laughs> so what is our excuse for not going out there and telling others about Jesus? Could it be, well, I've got to mow my lawn today. Well, I've got to go to the grocery store and and get some food. Well, you can take some gospel tracts with you and hand them out to people while you're walking around. Well, you know, I, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Uh, always make an excuse for why we won't go out and tell people about Jesus. Ouch. So let's make sure that we don't make excuses. Amen? Alright, so that is the end of the topic. Even me. So, praise the Lord. Alright. So now, we'll get into today's hymn and hymn story. <clears throat> Amen. So today's hymn and hymn story is from a second. We're marching to Zion. Amen. We're marching to Zion. And <clears throat> this is written by Isaac Watts and Robert Lowry. <clears throat> uh, so I head here. I forget the tune of this. All right. So I'll read it to you. 
uh, come we that love the Lord, and let us, uh, excuse me, let me read, read, do that, come we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known, join in a song with sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord, and thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. Uh, let those refuse to sing who never knew our God, uh, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Uh, then let our uh, songs abound, and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to uh, fairer worlds on high. To fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, so I'll get into the hymn story now. This was written in 1707, and the passage is from Psalm 50, verse 2. So we have the Bible here, and go to Psalm 50, 5 0, Psalm 5 0, 50, and verse 2. All right, so verse 2 it says, um, Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Amen. Uh, go ahead and read verse 1. It says, The mighty God. Even the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Amen. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. Amen. And uh, so on and so forth. Go so read that uh, on your own time. Good psalm there. Alright. Go ahead and, uh, a second. Alright, so I'll go ahead and read you the story here. Behind the hymn, We're Marching to Zion. It says, On the night of November 30, 1940, German planes bombed Southampton, England, and destroyed the above uh, Bar Congregational Church. The pastor and caretaker were able to rescue the church records but all else was destroyed, except for a bust of Isaac Watts, the father of English uh, hymnody. Uh, the destruction of those old buildings was a blow to Christian history, for within the walls of the above bar church the hymns of young Isaac Watts were first sung. Watts was born in Southampton on July 17, 1674, the oldest of nine children. He was a brilliant lad who started learning Latin at age four and Greek and Hebrew uh, soon after. It's said that even before he could speak plainly, he would cry out, A book! A book! Buy a book! Whenever uh, anyone would give him money. Isaac advanced so quickly in school that a local physician offered to finance his education at a major university. As members of above Bar Congregational Church, However, the Watts were committed uh, dissenters, uh, Christians who didn't believe in joining the state church. Dissenters opted instead for establishing independent congregations where they could worship without conforming to government regulations. <laughs> yeah, let's take that to, to heart. Uh, not bowing down to government regulations when they say, don't go to church, don't go to church because of this or that. Can't, uh, can't meet together because of certain things. Uh, as such, they were bitterly persecuted, and Isaac's father had even spent time in prison for his beliefs. Nor were dissenters allowed to attend the state universities. So at 16, Isaac enrolled instead in an independent academy in London and graduated with honors. Returning home, Isaac spent two years more uh, living with his parents and attending above Bar Congregational Church. One day, discontented with the quality of the singing at the church, he wrote a hymn 
for the church to sing, this was a new and radical innova innovation, for at that time only the songs of David were sung in English churches. Uh, nonetheless, above, con above Bar Congregational Church, uh, Gamely tried the young man's hymn and liked it so much they asked for another. For two and a half years, Isaac churned out hymns for that little congregation. Those two post-college years at home became the golden years of Watts' hymn writing. How remarkable that some of the greatest hymns ever sung in the English language, such as We're Marching to Zion, should be produced by the father of hymnody, uh, who was only 20 years of age. The old church building may be gone now, but the hymns first sung there will never die. Amen. Good story there. Amen. All right, so that was the hymn and hymn story. Uh, for the hymn, We're Marching to Zion. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Another good hymn. And this, again, is written by Isaac Watts. And this is a George, Georgian chant and arranged by Lo Lowell um, Mason. And it was written in 1707. And the passage will be from Galatians 6.14. Amen. So, another one by Isaac Watts. All right, so praise the Lord. Looks like the next uh, few hymns will be uh, ones by Isaac Watts. Amen. So praise the Lord. All right, so we'll find out more about that hymn and hymn story tomorrow when I survey the wondrous cross. Amen. All right, so I'll go ahead and sing some scripture songs, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Amen. So... Uh, we'll go ahead and sing yesterday's, and then we'll conclude with today's. All right, so let me go back to yesterday's, and we'll sing yesterday's. Amen. Second Peter three <clears throat> nine. The Lord is not, not slack, slack concerning, concerning his, his promise, promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, us not willing that any should, should perish, but, but that all should come to repentance. repentance. That's right. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering, long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering, long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, that all should come. Amen. All right. Now we'll conclude with today's. First John three two. Beloved, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it does not, not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Amen. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be, shall be like him. For we shall see him, we shall see him, we shall see him as he is, we shall see him, for we shall see him, and shall see him as he is. Beloved, now are we the sons of God.
God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, we know that when he shall appear, we shall be, shall be like him. For we shall see him, we shall see him, we shall see him as he is. We shall see him, we shall see him, we shall see him as he is. Amen. All right, so I just saw your read your comment there, uh, Brother Dan, uh, about he has others. Well, shouldn't be making that excuse either, amen? So let's not make excuses of why we should not go. Let's go out there and get the gospel out to every creature, amen? And uh, if you're just joining you wonder what I'm talking about, uh, it's in today's devotional about uh, us going out and spreading the good news about Jesus saves, amen? So praise the Lord. All right, so before I uh, conclude the broadcast, I'll give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's topic. So tomorrow is the 16th already, and the uh, passage is from Psalms 32.11, and it says, Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, right here in the middle of the page, it says here, there's a little man here. I know it's backwards on the screen, but there's a little man here holding the, holding the envelope, it looks like. And it says here, the word of God is his love letter to you. Amen. It sure is a love letter to you. And he wants everyone to be saved and trust, trust him as their savior so you can have eternal life. And that's why he went to the cross. That was the greatest love ever. It was Jesus going to the cross and laying down his life for you and for me. Amen. So praise the Lord. And uh, so that's tomorrow's scripture song, Psalm 32, 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. <clears throat> and let's not let the things of this world get us down or depressed or uh, frustrated, amen, even though uh, the world's gone pretty mad with everything that's going on around uh, the world today. But let's keep our minds and hearts focused on Jesus and tell somebody the good news and how they can escape uh uh, damnation and escape hellfire and escape perishing in their sins by trusting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, so that is the scripture song for tomorrow. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled The Spirit Immeasurable for tomorrow. And the passage is from John 3 34. Amen. So that will be tomorrow's um, Baptist Bread devotional topic. And if you'd like to get a box of these, uh, they come in a box of 10. And they're twelve ninety five, and you can get a subscription, and they'll be sent to you every other month. And so if you order now, you should probably get uh, September and October's uh, book. And this is the cover of it. And the mountain is back there. Amen. And the uh, passage on the front says, Hearken unto this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Job thirty seven fourteen. And if you want to order these, they're available on the website here at www timgreenministries.org Amen. And then, of course, the scripture songs. You can order the CDs or download them through MP3 format. And they even have the scripture song book on the website. I think you can order that on the website there. And it's got all the um, scripture songs in it, so you can order yourself one. And Amen. And they're available on the website, www.dailyscripturesongs.com And that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website. And pray for them and pray for all those that are um, over there in Guyana and all the things that are going on over there in that part of the world. And it seems like they're always trying to enforce uh, this vaccine on everybody and trying to tell everybody that uh, that you can't have freedoms and liberties unless you've been vaccinated. So, And if you haven't, well, then you're, you're considered hateful and don't care about others and selfish and all this other stuff and all this other garbage that they want to try to uh, brainwash everybody and keep everybody in fear. Um, and so, so much craziness going on in this world, but praise the Lord, we have Jesus, amen. All right, and then tomorrow's hymn story, and hymn will be from the hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, 
Amen. And the book here is uh, Then Sings My Soul, book two. Uh, again, I know it's backwards on the screen, but this is book two. And this is 150 of the World's Greatest Hymn Stories, written by Robert J. Morgan. And you can order that from your local bookstore, or you can probably look for it online somewhere. Amen. Forgot to put the bookmark back in here. A second. Where was I? Ooh, okay. Mm -mm -mm. All right, put the bookmark back in here so I don't lose the page. All right, so, anyway, that'll be it for today. So, thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. And so, see you all, Lord willing, here, there, or in the air. Amen. All right, bye for now. Thanks for watching.